Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joey's Wine Rec. I'm Joey Paisano. Today we're working on week four. That's four, four, four. Week four of March Merlot Madness. This week we're going to head to Chile. Or Chile, depending on how you pronounce it. So in the past weeks, you hopefully have seen us go through California Merlot, French Merlot, Washington State Merlot, and now Chilean Merlot. Today we're going to feature a Trile, Trile, I can say that, Trile Merlot. It is from Trile. It's actually from Central Coast. So look at the map. If you look at the map, kind of the western portion of South America is Chile, long skinny little country. And it's going to be the Central Coast, right? So let's do it. All right, what we're looking at today again is the tree rate. It is a 2011 Merlot. Uh, it's not blended with anything as far as we can tell. So 2011, pretty good. One of the things that you're gonna notice as you start tasting more wines and such, Northern Hemisphere, like US and Europe, have slightly different growing seasons than what Southern Hemisphere does. So you get a we could even be looking at a 2013 in some cases, and we'll, we will be later on when we start looking at some of the whites on stuff that seems, gosh, that's really new. Well, it's because of the way the, the seasons are. Their seasons are actually opposite hours here in the U.S. So it's, what, the fourth day of spring so far, even though we have snow on the ground. Uh, it's actually getting into fall now in the southern hemisphere. So let's do this. Again, tree lay. Trile. Going to go back to a cork this time, not the screw top, which is a stalvin enclosure. Yes, right on. I got my little wine knife. I prefer, remember, I prefer the waiter corkscrew double pull. There's a little whip right here. I like to use that and just zip that around. You can actually get some tools that work as well. I've got some of those as well. Hang it out over there, but for our purposes, we're going to do it this way. Uh, the foil this time out is actually plastic. Plastic foil? Sure, why not? And you can take it all off like I'm doing, or just take a portion off. It's really dependent on you. Get rid of that. And there you go. Get ready to rock and roll. Make sure you get your presentation right. I do it this way not just because. I want to play to the camera, although it's probably some of it. But my time as a waiter, I want to make sure that anytime I'm presenting wine, I'm whomever purchased it or picked it out or whatever, I'm making sure that they see that. I don't need to see it as I'm serving it, so I'll do that like that. And one, two, three, get that sucker going down. And because it's got a double pull, do the first one like this. Got a little kind of a hinge on it. Pull that up part way. And then you get the second one and pull it up the rest of the way. And yeah, you can pop it and make a lot of noise and stuff. Too. Yeah. Maybe a little tacky. Or you might get a little bit. Sorry, we have a guest in the studio today. And first thing we look at. Yes, you can go ahead and sniff, sniff, smell, sniff, smell. Cork, but really no big reason to do that. But what you see is a nice little red stain or whatnot on the end of the cork. That's because typically with red wines, especially, but all cork, all excuse me, all cork wines, or wines that have corks, you really want to store them sitting at an angle or laying on a side because it helps keep the cork wet. So pull this off and you would present that to whomever. I usually will present it like so. Here you go. Lock this up. Put this way. Put it up. Like a lot of places that have corks, they actually have a little design on it. Yep. So that 
is that. And so it's ready to rock and roll. I use drip stop. Thank you everybody from Sweden, my family. Love it. Little silver disc or chrome. Chrome. Roll that sucker up. Put it in and voila. Again, like a presentation. Do it left handed, right handed. I pour left handed because lefties are perfectly cooler than anybody else. And then also, and I'll try to be quiet so you can do this. What's the first thing we notice? Outstanding color. Really cool, dark red, kind of purple looking. Very, very cool stuff. Right on. That's going to be good for us. So we do our normal. We'll do a little swirl. It's sometimes easier to go ahead and do it like this. Here on a counter or a table or whatever. You can certainly do this. I find myself and some other people sometimes start swirling like this. And you don't want to do that. That's, that's alcohol abuse. Ooh, I like the smell of this. I'm smelling kind of raspberry, a little bit of plum. It's okay to get your nose in there. You know, sorry, you can't hear that today. It's a little chilly in the house, in the studio, so Ernest is from it and all that stuff. And I've got a little, tiny little bit of a cold. Not enough with this. Sorry. So, mm, so far, so good. Before I taste that, because I want to keep it hanging, where did we get this? Well, we actually, same thing, same thing, same time, same place. We did the other three that we tasted. There's three. Or three for my European friends and family. Uh, bought this at Downtown Fine Spirits and Wines. Bought them all at the same time. And my goal when I decided to do this, marshmallow that is, is to get four different things, one each week, all Merlot, of course, from several parts of the world, and everything had to be less than $10. Still sticking with that. This one happens to be $9.95. So $9.95, pretty good deal. It's gonna be something that you're not gonna, it's not gonna break the bank if you decided that, hey, this is my house wine, this is what I want to drink all the time. Of course, we can do you know, better stuff, more expensive stuff later on. I do that. I will go through phases where, you know, such and such is my, my house wine and it's price point, you know, whatever, $10, 15 6 10 it depends. Or we're adding the grand scheme things. But always, anytime I have friends and family coming over, I may have start off with this, but by the end of the night, we we'll start getting into some of the stuff that's a touch more expensive, which is okay, because when people come to my house, they're usually pretty good about bringing stuff to. So let's taste this. So remember, Trile from Chile. That's good stuff. So what did I do when I tasted it? Same thing we always do. Get a little extra air in it. <clears throat> it helps aerate it. it. Gives you a little bit better feel, better taste. Kind of a, just a little extra something. Whoa. So what did we taste? Um, <clears throat> really a lot like what we smelled as well. So a little bit of raspberry, a little bit of plum. Um, Tiny little bit of spice, but not in your face, whoa, hot, you know, really dragon hot stuff. More of a kind of subtle stuff. Uh, a lot of times, um, South American food, you know, us Americans, we think, you know, well, it's you know, south of the U.S., so it's got to be hot and spicy. Spicy and flavorful, very different than hot and spicy. I like hot and spicy, but there are some days that, you know, something a little less so. I made something which this would actually go really well with uh, a while back. It was a rice and meat dish with nutmeg and raisins. It was fantastic. I might have to try that at our house without meat because tofu is actually not so bad. It took some getting used to, but you know, it's kind of cool. So I'll taste this again and...
that's some good stuff. So again, 2011 Trile from Chile, Merlot. It's all Merlot. It's from Central Coast of Chile. Someplace I need to get myself to at some point. Have these big plans and do all these really cool things. Uh, definitely get down to South America wine country. It's going to be one of the really cool ones. What is this going to go with? Um, typical. It's going to go with pretty much anything you want to put it with. But some of the better ones, it's going to be, uh, it'll actually go really well with ham. It's going to go with some more lighter, kind of medium to light pasta dishes, like a chicken parmesan would be good. Um, some things like that. Again, a little bit of spice, but not so overwhelming. It's probably not going to be real, real awesome with most of the, the stereotypical Thai food that's just really in your face. But like I said, that, that subtle, flavorful stuff. So maybe a little bit of nutmeg, maybe a little bit of allspice, things like that. It's going to rock. What else? Well, I don't know. I think we're going to give this one another try. I'm going to give this one, especially based on price point and everything else, I'm going to give this one another shot. Sorry. I'm going to say 8.75. So, does this mean this is the winner? I don't know. You're going to have to tune in next week. Next week, we're going to go through all the four that we've tasted, tell you which one's going to be the best, and it might surprise you. It may or may not be the most expensive, but remember, everything that we got was less than $10. $10 for $7.50. I guarantee that none of them are going to be something you're going to be embarrassed to serve. And if I came to your house and I tasted this, two thumbs up even. So, as we always, always do, our first toast is always to Cat. Cat, thanks so much for being you. Thank you for putting us in touch with all these amazing people that we've met over the years. We love you. Here's to you. Salute. Peace.